My name is John Searles and I'm the editor at large at Cosmopolitan. The thing about Helen is she never really liked to talk that much about herself. She was always so focused on the person she was with and she always would had this quirk of complimenting people's posture. She always told me I had good posture and I actually think of that. And she would just always ask about my life and my goals and what I was doing. And I think that's the thing she always wanted other people to live a better life. And so she encouraged that. I think often people who become icons are people who say things that haven't been said before. And that's what Helen did. She said to women, it's okay to have sex when you're single. It's okay to have a career and opt out of having family if you want, or to have both if that's what you want. And it's okay to live a big life and go after it. Sometimes the things she said ruffled feathers, uh, uh, but she seemed to survive it and do it all with a sense of humor. Helen Gurley Brown definitely played a huge part in the sexual revolution. Uh, up until then, women were cast in very traditional roles, and, and many women didn't, they weren't given permission to live outside these defined gender norms. And she told them to, that they could go out there and pursue sex and pursue men and, and do it fearlessly and pursue a great career. And she was a perfect example because she got the guy she wanted, the job she wanted. She had a lot of money and she dressed sexy and she, wasn't a, she did all these things, but still maintained her sense of being a woman. Helen's impact on the publishing industry was enormous. And the thing was, I remember one of my first pieces I worked on here at Cosmo was an excerpt of Gore Vidal's memoir, if you can imagine that, in Cosmopolitan. But she would have these huge writers in the magazine, and then she would also have these, you know, writing sort of smart literary pieces, but then she would also have writers writing about sort of sexy, sort of salacious things too that hadn't really been done before. And I think when people saw the sales of Cosmo, um, there was never anything quite like it, so her impact was enormous on the, on the magazine industry. Some nights when I was leaving, uh, in the last years of her life, I would see her down in the lobby and she would be walking to take the bus. And David, her husband, always hated that she took the bus. And she, she would always say, I, I, oh John, you know, I'm taking the bus, don't tell David, but I'd like to see what my Cosmo girls are wearing. And so I'd walk her to the bus stop, and you could see people looking at her, they, they knew she was someone, you know, and she would look around. I think that was her dream to see women on the streets of New York, like wearing great clothes, working great jobs, owning their lives. And I think that was her dream for the magazine was to be a place for women to get that permission to live the lives they wanted. She was unafraid to be sexy, unafraid to go after what she wanted. She had a great sense of humor, a wicked sense of humor. Uh, so she did everything she did, she did it with a real sense of fun about it. And I think that's what makes her the ultimate Cosmo girl. There was this funny thing about Helen, that she was notoriously frugal. I mean, taking the bus when she had a car and driver, you know, not, she hated big tippers. She would always argue with her husband about tipping too much. And she would do this thing in the office where, uh, for, for holiday gifts, she would give everyone, she would save all year long, save the stuff she got from publicists, and then she would re-gift it to us. I think she was the world's first re-gifter. And I know it sounds crazy, but we all kind of started to look forward to it because we wanted to see what we would get. And like one time a friend of mine got a pair of Jane Fonda leg warmers, and I got a watch from the movie Einstein, but you kind of were like, well, what's she gonna give me this year? And you know what? In a way it was more entertaining than a bottle of wine. Maybe some of Helen's frugality paid off, but I suspect it was her success with Cosmo and David's success with all of his movies. But at the end of her life, she was able to leave millions and millions, I believe it was $30 million, to Stanford and Columbia uh, to the journalism programs there, which is an incredible legacy to, to leave behind.